prevalence and many patients with COPD suffer from extrapulmonary organ manifestations that are not clearly explained by a reduced pulmonary function or reduced bad blood gas analysis. And these organ manifestations are such as cachexia wasting, coronary artery disease, osteoporosis are often um, hidden under the surface of COPD, like the bottom part of an iceberg under the sea, and are not primarily asso associated with the COPD itself. In my talk, I want to give you uh, some facts about the development of cachexia um, due to systemic inflammation and uh, what clinical consequences we can draw. Um, in the last uh, 40 years, or otherwise in the year 2020, COPD will be the fourth leading cause of death. And in the last 40 years, uh, the mortality of the COPD rose up by 163%, while other uh, disease um, entities such as coronary artery disease, stroke, and even cancer went down in their mortality. And regarding cachexia, in, in, at the moment we have in Europe patients of uh, 1.7 million, and uh, another uh, 3. million patients in Europe with COPD are on risk of cachexia. So uh, COPD uh, development starts with smoking, and cigarette smoke is going to activate immigrant um, inflammatory cells such as macrophages, neutrophils, lymphocytes, on the other hand, um, also uh, resident cells such as epithelial cells or fibroblasts. And, and taken together, uh, this, uh, the concept of uh, humoral um, inflammatory factors such as interleukin growth factors, um, we, uh, we will um, find uh, pathomorphologic features such as emphysema, bronchitis, and fibrosis. And besides these local uh, changes in the lung um, that lead to, uh, to airflow limitation, we have a, another, another issue uh, regarding the systemic inflammation that is responsible for reduced pulmonary function, responsible for uh, the symptoms, for, for exacerbations, and for the reduced quality of life in COPD. And um, this systemic inflammation is mediated by a variety of um, humoral inflammatory factors such as interleukin-8, CRP, IL-6, factors that we know from other chronic diseases such as uh, chronic heart failure, uh, infectious disease, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, the, the inflammation is uh, responsible for a variety of comorbidities in COPD such as uh, muscle weakness, atrophy, um, leading to cachexia, uh, responsible for cardiovascular events, responsible for development of metabolic diseases such as diabetes, and responsible also for osteoporosis. And the COPD is a, a highly heterogeneous disease. We all know from medical textbooks the, the, the two classical phenotypes of COPD, the pink puffer, the guy with the emphysema, and the blue bloater, the guy with the bronchitis. Um, but uh, the, this approach is a bit too simple. You know, uh, from the 2010 published Eclipse study, um, that was an, a longitudinal observational non-interventional studies on 2,100 COPD patients over three years that revealed that um, patients with, with COPD are highly heterogeneous even in the same stage of disease. And this heterogeneity is, um, is due to uh, gender, age, smoking status, airway obstruction, and comorbidities. And therefore, um, this complex of, of, of highly heterogeneity is um, um, a big thing when we tackle uh, COPD and its comorbidities. And inflammation and wasting um, is uh, closely related to COPD and responsible uh, for cachexia. And uh, the process is uh, it's very complex uh, due to systemic inflammation. We also find a loss of anabolic stimulation. We have a hypermetabolism, which is due to the uh, increased resting energy, energy expenditure. And we have also um, a muscle apoptosis. Taken together, the loss of muscle mass or a loss of, of body mass um, leads to a, a reduction in BMI, which is um, an independent predictor of mortality in COPD. But uh, the body composition, the fat-free mass, um, uh, predicts more precisely the, the mortality in COPD patients. And this is a, an early work uh, from Annemies Girls from Arctic showing that patients with, with, with the COPD and the low FMI 
um, are, um, on a higher risk of, of mortality rather than those with a normal um, uh, fat free mass. But you remember the, the obese guy, um, one of the previous setting um, um, charts. Uh, obesity is also a risk factor for developing cachexia. And we know that these bronchitic phenotype, these, these guys with, with, uh, with, with obesity are on, on risk of, <coughs> of loss of, um, of muscle mass because uh, the, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, is associated with reduced lung function, with reduced um, this, uh, blood gas analysis, which is bad, uh, leading to local um, adipose tissue hypoxia. Uh, taken together, uh, we have a, a systemic um, immune um, response leading to an increased systemic inflammation. And this uh, systemic inflammation is responsible for the skeletal muscle dysfunction. And we have in these patients the loss of uh, uh, muscle mass, and on the other hand, a uh, dysfunction. And uh, this, this dysfunction is um, explained by a, a loss of muscle endurance, uh, loss of exercise capacity leading to a uh, reduced quality of life in these patients. And the skeletal muscle apoptosis is another important point um, leading to cachexia in, in COPD patients. This is a study from uh, Alvaro Agusti from Spain. And he uh, clearly demonstrated on uh, biopsies from um, um, muscle femoris um, that uh, patients with COPD and cachexia have a, a higher muscle apoptosis. And he uh, measured this on. Um, uh, on, um, um, on apoptotic um, proteins, and this is a PARP. A PARP is a, um, a protein which is going to break down as a late event um, on apoptotic cascade. And the appearance of this 89 kilodalton um, protein fragment um, indicates um, a, a very high apoptosis in these patients with, with low BMI. Another important point is the increased muscle protein breakdown, not only in patients with COPD and cachexia, also in patients with COPD without any signs of cachexia compared to normal controls. Another point is uh, the, the anorexia. This is a, a, a work from my own group. Um, we were interested in, in appetite and COPD, and uh, um, we made a small study on 100 COPD patients. And uh, we have shown uh, that uh, patients with cachexia and COPD have a, um, a reduced, a clearly reduced appetite score, and uh, that this anorexia is um, associated with hormonal derangement. We measured some um, inflammatory factors and showed us this uh, hormonal derangement is uh, related to the systemic inflammation. Another point, another feature of cachexia is anemia, and anemia is present in COPD as well, and uh, this is also a study of my group, and we were interested in uh, to find out um, whether COPD patients um, are anemic, and in 101 uh, uh, stable patients with um, gold stage 1 to 3, um, we measured a variety of, of um, blood parameters, and we found a prevalence of anemia of 13%, and we also pointed out as, uh, that this uh, anemia is not associated with uh, reduced pulmonary function, but is associated with um, uh, systemic inflammation. And the prevalence of anemia is even higher in patients that are hospitalized due to acute exacerbation. And this is a prevalent study at the Shelly Hospital in Berlin. Uh, we measured um, more than 4,000 patients on the uh, discharge diagnosis, and we found out and compared this with the laboratory parameters, and we found out that, that COPD patients hospitalized for a, an acute exacerbation have a, a anemia prevalence of more than 20%. This is as high as in patients with chronic heart failure. And the mechanism that leads to um, um, anemia is uh, also due to systemic inflammation, this uh, humoral inflammatory factors, TNF I6 leads to a reduced survival of erythrocytes on the one hand, and on, on the other hand, and to a reduction um, to an EPO resistance in the bone marrow, and, uh, and, and the EPO uh, will find um, or will uh, focus on um, a um, EPO resistant bone marrow and uh, with, uh, um, this 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 uh, um, this uh, reduced um, um, outcome of reticulocytes, and we, we will then have a chronic normocytic pneumochromia anemia. So what therapeutic options do we have um, to, to treat pulmonary cachexia? 
First, um, we have conventional appetite stimulants, uh, the other thing, novel appetite stimulants such as ghrelin, growth hormone, anti-inflammatory therapy, steroids, and anemia treatment. As past pro toto, I want to point out um, on ghrelin, which is a, a promising new option for treatment of cachexia. You all know this is the study from, from the Japanese group that administered uh, ghrelin in COPD patients and uh, clearly demonstrate a um, a increase uh, in appetite, increase in, in muscle mass, and uh, therefore, from my point of view, um, Gradient is a promising uh, a new agent because Gradient is going to increase the, the appetite, going to increase the food intake, and going to reduce the, the inflammation, uh, uh, the inflammatory response in these patients um, with the, the option to, to reverse all these bad things shown here in this bar. Um, another uh, important new point are statins. Uh, statins are also promising in, 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 in reduction the, the inflammatory process in, um, in COPD. This is the study um, which was performed on more than 200 uh, COPD patients with different stages of cachexia. And uh, they, they are treated with statins over three years. And uh, the study clearly demonstrated that studying statins reduce the decline in lung function over time. This is uh, very important because uh, the, the, the lung function in COPD goes rapidly down. It is not reversible, but this, uh, this kind of um, the, the drug, uh, we are able to, to reduce the decline in lung function and uh, therefore, um, as, as, um, um, to, to follow a thing, to, um, to reduce the, the, the bad quality of life. And the molecular effects on, on statin we can find on the chemokine level by reduction of the, the, the chemokine levels, and on the other hand, by reduction of the transcription level like nf kappa b or PPR2, uh, alpha and gamma, and um, all taken together, these things lead uh, to a reduction in systemic inflammation, a reduction on expression on adhesion molecule chemokines, <coughs> and increased phagocytosis, and um, taken together, um, we have uh, positive effects on the uh, the, the systemic inflammatory uh, effect in COPD. So at the end, um, take home message. So COPD is a multisystemic disease. We have a variety of, of comorbidities. Mm -hmm. um, beside cachexia, um, heart disease, cardiac failure, osteoporosis, diabetes, anemia, and depression. And these um, factors taken together need a, a multisystemic therapy to tackle the COPD as a disease, how it comes out. Thank you for your attention. Cigarette smoking is going down, certainly throughout the developed world. How come we've got such a huge increase in the prevalence of COPD if smoking is the main Yeah, but that's right, but smoking is coming down right now because patients uh, we are talking about are smokers since 40 years. So maybe you, 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 can, you can ask this question in 40 years at the, at the 40s cachexia <laughs> conference, then we, make, we will find another picture. Very much. Did you say there were 3 million Europeans on risk of cachexia? Yeah. At risk of COPD patients on, on risk of cachexia, yes. Okay. So the health economics is quite That's right, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Is it, is it known how big the part of the malnutrition is, part of the sarcopenia mm -hmm. in the uh, COPD patients? Um, there are different, there are different, um, different numbers um, saying between um, five and fifteen percent, something like this. So, about how, how big portion of the sarcopenia is due to malnutrition in these patients? You think? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't have exact data about this, but I can only, um, I, I reckon this is about uh, same thing, fifteen percent, something like this. And if you speak. Uh, about sarcopenia and cachexia, then we, we speak about patients with, with, a, with a higher status, with a higher gold status, the more severe patients. The patients with, with stage 1 and stage 2 with a more a milder, a milder um, part of the disease are, are not often on risk of cachexia. They are more uh, obese, but uh, they, they lose uh, fat free mass as well due to this inflammation as I thought. There's one, one more thing I would like to, to highlight, which is 
Um, you suggested that statins may be a good idea in, in COPD, but on the other hand, we know from several of these chronic diseases that lowering cholesterol is not such a good idea. Do you think there's a paradox there? Uh, no, because uh, we, we speak about, we speak about not, not about cholesterol, we speak about the, the anti-inflammatory effects, the, the molecular effects that, um, that statins have. And this is, this is um, beside of, of the reduction of cholesterol. So if we could use a statin that does not lower cholesterol, would that be the, the best option? That, that would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Any other from a long master university, um, I appreciate your idea that uh, systemic inflammation definitely is associated mm -hmm. with uh, the occurrence of cachexia and CFD. In fact, we do quite a lot of research on that in Maastricht as well. But I think uh, a little word of caution there that it still remains to be proven that is actually responsible for the cachexia. And like you were suggesting, um, it might be useful to, to have uh, uh, drugs that would target systemic inflammation in order to prove this and then if this works, treat our patients with that. But you also uh, propose to use steroids, and I think you meant corticosteroids for that purpose. And I'm not sure if that would be a, a very wise decision considering the fact that corticosteroids may actually induce uh, muscle atrophy. So it's uh, a word of caution, and perhaps you can comment on that. Yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, what, what I meant is, is that inhaled, the inhaled therapy of, of this, this inhaled corticosteroids. There's one study um, which is debated in the study, definitely. But there's one study showing a reduction in inflammatory and systemic inflammatory response uh, decrease in IL-6, IL-8, and TNF in CBD patients with, they are treated with inhaled corticosteroids. And um, therefore, um, I, I, will more foc I, I would like to focus on, on the inhaled uh, way of application of steroids. You are completely right mm -hmm. that, that the systemic therapy uh, with the steroids in CBD is, is only, is only um, a guideline accepted in the, in the state of, of exacerbation, but, but not in the, in the chronic um, stable state of disease. But yes, uh, you did not mention, if I'm not wrong, uh, nutritional support in COPD. Do you think uh, there is a role for nutritional support? Yeah, it is, it is, um, at the moment, we don't have convincing data that clearly show that nutritional support only will revert the cachexia or the wasting in COPD. What, what we have to do, we have to apply nutrition, we have to apply um, physical exercise, rehabilitation, maybe together with, um, um, with anabolic drugs. That, 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 might be, that might be a focus, but nutrition alone um, seems, from my point of, of, of view, at, at the moment, um, not, not the, the optimal way. We have, we have to, to combine this with, with other therapies. And as far as I'm concerned, there are not convincing data uh, of but you may agree that it, it should be part of the uh, of the, the multi-system yeah, yeah, program. Yeah.